a jet so fast it nearly shattered the sound barrier back in 1945. But it never flew in combat. Why would the most advanced fighter of its time be grounded before it ever saw battle? The answer isn't just technical. It's a story of ambition, collapse, and a legacy that changed aviation forever. And what Messerschmitt was building might have been the world's first supersonic jet. The Angel Pushed Jet. Before the HG prototypes ever took shape, the original ME-262 was already rewriting the rules of aerial combat. It wasn't just fast, it was revolutionary. As the world's first operational jet fighter, it stunned Allied pilots and thrilled German aces. One of them, Adolf Galland, famously described his first flight as, it's as if an angel is pushing. That wasn't just poetic, it was prophetic. The ME-262 could reach speeds up to 870 kilometers per hour, far beyond anything propeller-driven aircraft could manage. It climbed faster, struck harder, and vanished quicker than its enemies could react. But even with its cutting-edge jet engines, Messerschmitt's engineers weren't satisfied. They saw something bigger on the horizon, something faster, sleeker, and more untouchable. Because in the shadows of war, a new race had begun, not just to win battles, but to break the sound barrier. The high-speed dream begins. By the early 1940s, Germany wasn't just chasing speed, they were trying to outrun physics itself. In 1941, aerodynamicist Adolf Bussmann proposed a radical idea. Sweep the wings of the ME-262 back at a sharp 35-degree angle. Why? To reduce drag and improve stability at high speeds. It was a visionary concept, years ahead of its time, but it was shelved, for now. Fast forward to 1943. With the war intensifying and Allied air power growing stronger, Messerschmitt launched a secret development series under the code name High Speed. Their goal? Create a jet that could pierce the transonic range and dominate the skies. This wasn't just about upgrading the ME-262. It was about building the fastest fighter the world had ever seen. Wind tunnel tests revealed a problem. The ME-262 became unstable in dives around Mach 0.83. That was dangerously close to the sound barrier. To push past it, engineers needed a sleeker, more aerodynamic design. And so, the HG series was born. Three futuristic variants, each more extreme than the last. Small tweaks, big gains. The first step toward supersonic flight didn't look radical, but it was quietly brilliant. The ME-262 HG-1 wasn't a complete redesign. It was a series of aerodynamic upgrades that turned a fast jet into a faster one. Engineers added fairings to the wing's leading edge, smoothing airflow and subtly sweeping the inner wing. That alone reduced drag. Then came the racing cockpit, a flatter, teardrop-shaped canopy that sliced through the air like a blade. The tail got a makeover too. Horizontal stabilizers swept back 40 degrees, paired with a larger rudder for better control. These changes weren't just cosmetic. They shaved off 10 to 20 percent of drag, an enormous leap in performance. In January 1945, test pilot Carl Bauer took HG-1 into the sky, but there was turbulence, not in the air, but in the design. The new tail caused oscillations mid-flight. After just five flights, engineers swapped it out for the original tail. Still, HG-1 proved something vital. Even small aerodynamic tweaks could unlock serious speed, and that gave Messerschmitt the confidence to go further. Usman's vision takes flight. HG-2 wasn't just an upgrade, it was a transformation. This time, Messerschmitt engineers went all in on Adolf Boosman's original idea, a full 35-degree wing sweep across the entire span. That meant less drag, better stability, and a serious push toward transonic flight. The ME-262 was no longer just fast, it was becoming futuristic. The changes didn't stop at the wings. Engine nacelles were redesigned and tucked closer to the fuselage, streamlining the jet's profile. The racing canopy and swept tail from HG-1 returned, but HG-2 added something wild, a V-tail. Two fins angled like a butterfly, meant to reduce frontal area and further cut drag, but wind tunnel tests threw cold water on the V-tail dream. Stability issues forced engineers to revert to a conventional tail. Still, the rest of HG-2's design held strong. By early 1945, a prototype was nearly ready. On paper, it was a beast, capable of pushing back the critical Mach range and flying faster than anything the Allies had. HG-2 was bold, it was brilliant, it was almost airborne. Supersonic ambition. HG-3 wasn't just pushing boundaries, it was trying to erase them. This was Messerschmitt's moonshot, a jet so advanced, it looked like it belonged in the 1960s, not the final months of World War II. The wings swept back at a razor-sharp 45 degrees, far beyond anything flying at the time. That angle wasn't just for style, it was designed to delay 
delay the critical Mach point and keep the aircraft stable as it approached supersonic speeds. And the engines? No more bulky nacelles hanging under the wings. HG3's Heinkel HES-011 turbines were embedded inside the wing roots, fed by sleek intake ducts. It was a radical move, reducing drag, shrinking the jet's profile, and making it harder to hit. The racing canopy returned, giving the jet a low, aggressive silhouette. A conventional tail kept things stable. On paper, HG3 was a monster. Mach 0.96 at 6,000 meters. Projected top speed, 1,185 kilometers per hour. That's faster than some jets that flew a decade later. But HG3 never left the ground. Parts were built, plans were drawn, wind tunnel tests were promising, but the war was collapsing too fast. The jet that could have broken the sound barrier never even got a runway. The collapse of a dream. Just as the HG jets were preparing to take flight, the war was falling apart. HG-1 had completed around 25 test flights by March 1945, gathering precious data on high-speed performance. Pilots were stunned by how much drag had been eliminated, how close they were getting to the sound barrier. But then came April. Allied bombers targeted Lechfeld Airfield near Augsburg, where HG-1 was stationed. The prototype likely went up in flames. HG-2, nearly ready for its maiden flight, was grounded by a tragic accident, damaged before it ever left the runway. HG-3, it remained a blueprint. Some parts were built, but final assembly was halted as the war collapsed around Messerschmitt's factories. American troops advanced, engineers scattered, the Allies seized everything. Plans, prototypes, wind tunnel models. The dream of a supersonic jet fighter died before it could be born, but the story didn't end there. Legacy that shaped aviation. The HG jets may have died with the war, but their DNA lived on. When Allied forces seized Messerschmitt's factories, they didn't just grab blueprints, they uncovered a treasure trove of aerodynamic research, wind tunnel data, and design concepts that were decades ahead of their time. British engineers at the Royal Aircraft Establishment tested captured ME262s and confirmed what Messerschmitt had already discovered. The jet was stable up to Mach 0.84, then hit a wall. But the real prize wasn't the aircraft, it was the science behind it. Swept wings, embedded engines, racing canopies, even the discarded V-tail, all of it fed directly into post-war jet development. The MiG-15, the F-86 Sabre, and countless others borrowed from these German designs. What Messerschmitt had imagined in secret hangars became the blueprint for Cold War air superiority. The HG series didn't just push boundaries, it redrew them. And now, decades later, we look back and ask, what if HG-3 had flown? What if the sound barrier had been broken, not by Chuck Yeager in 1947, but by a German test pilot in 1945? The ME262 HG series wasn't just a technical experiment, it was a glimpse into an alternate future. A future where Germany, despite being on the brink of collapse, was designing aircraft that could have changed the course of aviation history. These jets weren't just fast, they were visionary. Swept wings, embedded engines, racing canopies, and even the daring V-tail concept weren't just ahead of their time, they were decades ahead. HG1 flew, HG2 nearly did. HG3 was the dream that never got built, and yet, the ideas behind them didn't vanish. They were captured, studied, and quietly absorbed into the DNA of post-war aviation. The MiG-15, the F-86 Sabre, and countless other Cold War jets owe their existence to the breakthroughs Messerschmitt made in secret hangars during the final months of World War II. But here's the twist. None of these jets ever saw combat. Not because they weren't ready, but because history ran out of time. The war ended before the prototypes could be perfected. The factories were bombed, the engineers scattered, and the sound barrier remained unbroken, at least for now. So imagine this. You're a pilot in 1945. You've got two choices. One, climb into the proven M.E262, the jet that's already rewriting dogfighting tactics. Two, strap into the HG3 prototype, a machine so fast it might tear itself apart mid-flight, but could also make you the first human to flirt with supersonic speed. Would you take the risk? Would you trust the engineers who dared to defy physics? Or would you play it safe, knowing that history might forget the boldest jet ever built? Let us know in the comments. And if you're hungry for more stories like this, where ambition meets innovation and forgotten machines whisper secrets from the past, hit that subscribe button. Because next time, we're diving into a jet so stealthy, it vanished before radar even knew it existed.